By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Japan, Tokyo. We are back and we're going to watch a game between Masa, who is on a sky deck. It's got a lot of cool flyers. It's white, black and blue. So we've got Sarah Angel, Senior Vampire, Surrender Perfeet. Very cool deck, lots of control elements in it as well. And he's taking on Kun Kun and he's on robots. So both of these decks, very good. And I mean, these are fierce, nasty decks. And remember, we are playing Eternal Central. That means we've got four strip mines, we've got mana burn, and you can also include Fallen Empire. So maybe we're going to see some him to Turex as well. I mean, this is going to be a, a nasty top tier one match that we're going to look at in a moment. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section of the video, go to the games first. The easiest way to, to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And that's on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And please take a moment to visit that page because there you can find out how you can become a sponsor of the show. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts for just $1 a month. So go check it out. Maybe not now, maybe after the video, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna start with the deck deck section of the video and I'm gonna start with the Sky Deck by Masa. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Masa. So I'm always interested to see uh, people kind of playing these type of decks in a different format. So like I said in the introduction, we're playing Eternal Central, meaning we have access to multiple uh, strip mines. You can see that in the deck of Masa as well. He's playing with three strip mines. You can play with four if you want to. Now, if we're looking at the deck, uh, it is control, right? This really reminds me of the deck, of course, the, the best, argu arguably the best deck in old school. Um, but it's it's not as good in Eternal Central usually because Eternal Central tends to be a little bit quicker. And of course, in EC, you have access to those four strips, meaning your Mishra's Factory is not as good. And a lot of the deck players actually win through Mishra's Factory damage or combine that with another win con like a giant fireball. Um, the interesting thing here is that there are quite a lot of creatures in the deck of Masa, right? We see four Surrender Pefreets, two Sarah Angels, and I love seeing that two Sengir Vampires. I love the art of, of Sengir. And I'm quite interested to know, Masa, why you included two Sengir Vampires and not, for example, went for four Sarah Angels. I love that you did it because I think Sengir is such a cool creature. But purely technically looking at this, you would expect to uh, him to play with four Sarah Angels instead and kind of not play with the Sengirs. Also because Sengir Vampire has that double black in the casting cost. But again, I love it. Beautiful deck, by the way. Beautiful black bordered cards in here. Now the rest of the deck is kind of what you would expect, right? You've got the counter magic. Uh, you know, you've got the, the blue power. You, you, of course, have the two black cards that most people board in. We're probably going to see it in the deck of Kun Kun as well, the Demonic Tutor and the Mind Twist. We've got all the Moxin to kind of ramp up. And then there are two other cards that I find pretty cool in this deck, but they do make sense. Uh, those are the two Armageddons. I think Armageddon main is pretty good here because he's playing with eight pretty big flying creatures. So if you can get those flying creatures out and then slam an Armageddon on the table, that could lead eventually, you know, to the match. So if you've got a well-timed Armageddon, it can definitely give you the, the victory. What I also like, and I guess that says a lot about the meta here in Tokyo, Japan, is that Dust to Dust. So Dust to Dust is a card from the dark and, you know, it's two uh, white and one and you can remove two artifacts from the game. It's also a sorcery. Now, I think, again, this is because you're playing Eternal Central. Um, in, in Swedish and Atlantic, kind of the formats that I tend to play uh, more, uh, what you see is that Mishra's Factory is quite dominant. So you usually, when you have artifact removal, you want it to be at instant speed. So when your opponent animates the factory, you can destroy it with a disenchant, with a shatter, with a bolt. Uh, but in this case, or a crumble, you know, there are actually a lot of options and you also have land removal, but that's another discussion. But that means that sorcery speed artifact removal is usually banned to the sideboard if people even play with it. And in this case, um, you know, Masa is playing main Dust to Dust. So I think that's really cool. Also love the art of Drew Tucker, by the way, on the Dust to Dust. Also a big fan of the Ashes to Ashes. We don't see that card in this list. Now, when we're looking at the sideboard, we see an extra Disenchant and extra Swords because he's only playing with three each in the main. 
Uh, we also see a blue elemental blast. That's not going to help him much. We do see two more dusts to dust. And remember, he's playing robots today. So that's probably coming in. We also see um, a preacher, two preachers. I don't think they will be coming in for the simple reason that the robots deck is, of course, playing with trikes. So we don't expect to see those there. Anyway, this is the deck of, uh, of Masa. And now we're going to look at the deck of his opponent, Kun Kun. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Kun Kun, so it's robots. And I think the main thing that I noticed when looking at this list is that there are no Atox. So the Atox have left the building. Usually when playing with robots, you know, you're, you're playing with Vice, you're playing with the Moxen, uh, you're playing pretty aggressively, maybe some Bolts, and then you play with Trikes as well and Atox. Now this is really a different deck. This is really more control. We see the Vices there, but they're in the sideboard, right? They're not the main strategy of the deck. So when we're looking at the deck, it's very creature heavy, right? We've got two Tetraverses, four Suchis, four Triskelions, and of course, four Copy Artifacts. I think the key card here is the Trike. The Trike, six to cast a 4-4, four, four, well, actually a 1-1 one, one with three plus one plus one counters on it that you can shoot to any direction. And, you know, these creatures, they're a lot better when you when you play with them because they're instant value. Even if your uh, opponent manages to kill them on the spot, you still get to take those counters off and usually kill a creature with it. It is really good. And if not, you can still deal damage to your opponent. And then if you start playing copy artifacts on them, it really gets out of hand quickly. And he's also playing, of course, with all the ramp, right? We see the Moxen, we see the Black Lotus, one Felber Stone, quite interesting, that one off. We also see a Soul Ring. And then what goes together really well with robots, of course, the abyss remember with the abyss uh, it destroys a non-artifact creature during the upkeep of uh who, whose ever turn it is right um and in this case of course kun kun is not playing with any uh, non-artifact creatures and this card could be i mean he's only playing with a one-off though so it is a little bit thin would have been better if he would have had two main uh but that's going to be really could be really a key card here against that Flyers deck of, uh, of Massa. Now remember, he's also playing with one Demonic Tutor, meaning all those Silver Bullets, uh, you can count them double, right? Because if you have a Demonic Tutor and your opponent has maybe, you know, a Sarah and a Serendip uh, on board, you're probably going to tutor for uh, the Abyss. You're going to play it out and kill the creatures that way. So uh, Tutor really helps in kind of finding those key cards. I call them Silver Bullets that you need and kind of take them out of the deck whenever you need them, kind of a, kind of a toolbox idea there. Uh, talking about toolbox, we don't see uh, the transmute artifact in this deck, perhaps because it's uh, double blue. Now, when we're looking at the mana base, of course, there's something that I noticed straight away. Those are the four beautiful workshops. Now, remember, this is a format where you can play with four workshops, and that, of course, makes robots a very, very good deck to play with. So despite the fact that it's also the format where you can play with four strips, we've got four strips and four Mishra's uh, workshops, it is, of course, you know, really strong, you know, to play robots in a format where you can play with four of those. It's just an incredible land. It's kind of the 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 Black Lotus after the Black Lotus, in my opinion. You know, it's 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 a land. If you don't know what it does, tap for three mana. You can only use those three mana to cast artifacts, but still, it's insane, right? I mean, it is really nasty. What I love about the workshop, by the way, is when you cast an icy manipulator with it. The reason for that is we do see four ICs in the deck of Kun Kun, kind of showing how controlling the deck is, right? This is really not your robot's ATOG aggro build. This is much more your control build, right? And the ICs really show that. So you've got four IC manipulators. And what I love about them is with the workshop, you can play them out in turn two, sometimes even turn one if you've got a mox in the workshop. And it's only one to use the IC manipulator. Like I've, I've also played with workshop and then I sometimes cast like a jam day tome with them. And it just doesn't feel as good because to activate the tome, I need four mana. But remember, I cannot use the workshop mana. So usually I can play out my book, but I don't have the mana yet to use it. That feels kind of awkward. You don't have that problem with the IC manipulator. What you can do with the book though, talking about the Jam Day Tome that's, that's not in this deck, which is a little bit surprising. I would expect a little bit of card draw, especially in such a controlling list, um, is that the Jam Day Tome goes together really well with the Suchi. Because when the Suchi dies, you get four mana. Now remember, Eternal Central means mana burn. If you cannot use those four mana, you've got a problem. You take four damage. When you have a Jam Day Tome untapped, you can always put those four mana into the Tome and draw a card. I love when this happens, right? Because yes, your opponent is destroying your creature, which should be a feel bad, but it's also kind of a feel good because you get some value out of it, which is quite nice. Now, again, if you sorts to plowshares to Suchi though, 
it doesn't go to the graveyard, you don't get the four mana. So that's important to note. Another thing to mention here is that you can also use those four mana to pump into your Mishra's factories because we do see four Mishra's factories here in the deck of Kun Kun. We didn't see a single one in the deck of Masa. So these are like interesting uh, differences, different choices that both of these builders have made. Okay, this is the deck of Kun Kun. We looked at the deck of Masa. Let's go to the games here in Tokyo, Japan. Game number one, here we go. We're in Tokyo, Japan. I'm really excited for this. We've got Kun Kun on the right, on the play, with robots, white, uh, blue, and black. And he's playing against Masa, who's also on white, blue, and black, and he's playing a Skies deck. So it's a deck with a lot of flyers, Serendips, Angels, Senge Vampires, pretty cool. And oh, look at this Ancestral Recall by Masa here in the upkeep of Kun Kun. Great start for him. Let's see if, uh, if Kun Kun can do something here. Finding a Tundra, tapping two. Okay, there's a Felber Stone, so ramping up a little bit. He is playing with a full place of workshops in the deck, but apparently hasn't found any of those yet. Also playing with all the Moxen, and I believe uh, Masa is also playing with all the Moxen, by the way. He's now playing a Tundra, tapping two mana. What is he gonna do? Oh, Felber Stone. Okay, so both players playing a Felber, ramping up a little bit. Perhaps next turn, uh, Masa could play out, for example, a Surrender Pefrit. But let's see, does he want to do something else? No, he's going to discard a Counterspell passing the turn. So Kun Kun taking on his turn. I believe I saw a uh, Suchi in his hand. So if he's got another land, he could play Suchi. Look at that, the Time Walk. Ooh, he's going to miss his land drop. So really looking for lands here. Okay, that's something. That's a Mox Emerald, of course. Now he's got four mana. Could play out that Suchi, and the nice thing is, if Kun Kun decides to, or Masa decides to disenchant it, he can use the mana from the Suchi to pump into his Mishra's factory, because remember, we are playing with mana burn. Okay, tapping four here. Are we going to see the Suchi? Oh no, it's an Icy Manipulator. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Icy Manipulator also has four of those in the deck. And of course, a really good card. I wonder why he prefers the IC over the Surrender. Perhaps he wants to kind of tap down the lands, go more on the control route. There is another land here, a Scrub land, I believe, getting tossed off the table. You gotta be careful there, you know, because sometimes in a reflex, you close your legs and you can like bend the card. I mean, that's really scary with these cards. You don't want that to happen. Anyway, he's playing a Surrender Afrit. Not too much to worry about for Kun Kun because he has that IC manipulator, he can tap it down. Let's see what he can do with his turn. I mean, is he going to miss a land drop again? That's the question. Okay, going to tap two. Ooh, there's a Demonic Tutor. So we can play the Tutor because uh, Masa just played that Scrubland. So that means the Felwer Stone now also gives black mana. And that is why Felwer Stone is just such a good card in old school. Because people play with so many duels. And City of Brass, you see it all the time. Like, Felwer Stone is really good in old school. Look at this. Obviously, looking up the Ancestral Recall. Probably going to cast it straight away. Draw three cards. Looking for lands. Can he find that workshop? So, yeah, going to tap for blue here. Going to allow, of course, Masa here to cut his deck. Going to draw three. Let's see what he can find. Can he find a land? Yes, he can. Simitra's Factory, though. Not a workshop. But still, not too shabby. I mean, he's got five mana. If he can find another land next turn, he's up to six. Remember, he's playing Tetravis, he's playing Triskelion. I mean, six is an important number for his deck. But we're not there yet. So now we see Masa taking the first damage. So I'm going to make a note here, because it's kind of hard to follow the life totals with those duelist counters. So uh, Masa being on 19. Let's see what he's going to do with his turn. Could go up to five mana, potentially play a Sarah Angel or a Sengir Vampire. Does, of course, need another Black Swords for the Sengir. Okay, there's another Tundra, so let's see. Maybe he's got an Angel, so he wants to attack. There's the tap down of the Surrendip. So he's now going to go in second main. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapperty tap tap. What are we going to see here? Tapping the Felwer Stone and the Tundra. Oh, there's a Time Walk. That is really good. And, oh, also a Demonic Tutor. This is a really good turn for Masa here. And Time Walk and Demonic Tutor. This could be pretty disastrous here for Kun Kun, who's kind of falling behind now. Next turn, he's definitely going to take 3 damage from the Surrender. Not a problem, of course, because he's still on 20. So here we see also Kun Kun 
cutting the deck here of Masa, and now Masa taking his turn. So he's going to drop to 18 because of the surrender damage. And he's going to draw a card for turn. There is another... Oh, he's got a play set of Tundra now. How lovely. He's going to attack for three. Kun Kun dropping to 17, taking the first damage. Oh, a mind twist. Ah. Oh. I can feel it here, you know, I'm not in Japan at the moment, but I can feel it here, it's so painful. A mind twist here for five, look at that, copy artifact, icy manipulator, Suchi. That is painful for Kun Kun, I do think it's a good decision now that Kun Kun chose to play out that Suchi over, or that icy manipulator, I mean over Suchi. Another icy, I just think icy is such a good and versatile card, so another icy hitting the board keeping the Tundra here mana open, so perhaps he also has uh, a Swords to Plowshares, although I think he's just simply gonna gonna tap down the Surrender, of course. So uh, Masa taking another damage, gonna drop to 17 here. But I mean, this is so good for Masa, and of course he looked up that Mind Twist with the Demonic Tutor. And I mean, that's so good, that combination of Time Walk, Demonic Tutor, looking up the Twist, being able to untap all the mana, you know, that's just... Yeah, in a way you could say wonderful, but also very, very nasty. But hey, that is old school, of course. Look at this, tapping everything. Are we going to see a Brain Geyser? Yep, there's the Brain Geyser. I mean, Masa is really, really walking away or running away with this uh, game one at the moment. Sprinting, I should say. I mean, you had that Time Walk Demonic Mind Twist two turns, and now the next turn he's playing this huge... Rain Geyser, and remember he also earlier had of course that Ancestral Recall, so I mean he's, he's drawing the cards you want to draw here. This is amazing for Masa. I mean now he's got a tough decision to make, he's got to discard unless he found, yeah discarding the Counterspell, unless of course he found uh, some Mox in there. Didn't find any yet, passing the turn here to Kun Kun, let's see what Kun Kun can do, two cards in hand, now only one card in hand, playing a Strip Mine, gonna tap four, what are we gonna see? Oh, he's going to attack for four. Okay, okay. I thought he was going to play something out. Attack for four. That means that Masa falls to 13. Taking a damage from the Surrender, he's now on 12. And of course, that's a good strategy by uh, Kun Kun. I mean, he knows that Masa has more cards and probably going to win. So what do you try to do? Put the pressure on. You know, just, just go for that one plan. Try to get him as low as you can, as fast as you can. He's on 12 right now. It looks like he's going to tap 5 mana, so I'm expecting to see or a Sengir or a Sarah Angel here. He wants to attack, so there's the tap down of the Surrendip. Now remember, of course, Kun Kun also has another uh, Icy Manipulator. There's the Sengir Vampire. And there's the past turn. So I kind of expected Kun Kun here to tap down the Sengir on end step. I think that, that would have been a good move, because then he could have attacked again for 4 here. So I think that's a bit of a mistake, but hey, it happens. Anyway, drawing his card, passing the turn. So Kun Kun on 17 at the moment. Masa dropping to 11. Ooh, and there's a disenchant on end step here on one of the ICs. Ooh, that is a pretty big deal. That is a problem here for Kun Kun. Because now he's probably going to take 3 points of damage. He's still on 17 though. So he's got some time. He's not dead yet. But he needs, he really needs the top draws if he wants to get back into this. Remember the hand of, uh, of Masa is still pretty full after that Brain Geyser. Okay, tapping two here. There's a disenchant. Oh yeah, this is now very painful. Yeah, this is now really a problem. So Masa really finding that artifact removal and that is so painful for Kun Kun here. Next turn he can swing in for seven probably. I wonder if he's going to attack here. There's a Chaos Orb first, and he is going to swing in, so Kun Kun dropping to 14. Looking at the card for turn, Underground Sea passing the turn. Masa is now on 10, so his life total is halved. If he attacks with both, then maybe on the crackback, Kun Kun could try to attack for 4. There's the attack for 7, so Kun Kun's going to drop to 7 from 14 to 7. That is pretty painful, and is Masa gonna cast even another creature, tapping five again? Oh, Sarah Angel! And that's it, Kun Kun picking up the cards, he's not gonna wait for the inevitable. He says, game one is yours, let's shuffle up, 
Well, of course, check our sideboards and then shuffle up and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one game up from Masa Kun Kun on the play. Look at this, Ank of Mishra turn one. Now that's miserable for Masa. It means whenever you play a land, you take two damage. So now he's gonna take the damage. Masa dropping here from 20 to 18. There's a Pearl, there's a Jet. Wow, and there's a Surrendip turn one. This is really, really a good opening again for Masa. Let's see if Kun Kun can find an answer. Remember, he is playing with white. Ooh, no white mana though. Can he find something? He was kind of stumbling on Lance as well in game number one. So that's just bad luck for Kun Kun. What can he do? It looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. Maybe he doesn't want to play out land. He is doing it though. He's going to drop to 18 as well. Going to play an Ancestral Recall. That was kind of a quick flash. Trying to find something good against the Serenip. Gonna play, ooh, there's a soul Ring. Yep, there's a soul Ring with the Mox. Tapping four. Are we gonna see a creature or perhaps an IC against so an IC manipulator? Unfortunately for Kun Kun, doesn't have the mana to use it straight away, but still, it's pretty good. And here, Masa taking a damage, of course, from his own Surrender, dropping to 17, drawing a card for turn. Tapping two, are we gonna see Demonic? No, there's a quick disenchant. There's the attack for three, so Kun Kun dropping to 15. And no land drop, just a pass. And now, of course, uh, Kun Kun can also consider attacking here with the factory. Probably wants to find a solution for that Serendip. The good news for him is he's got a lot of mana after finding that Sol Ring in the previous turn. Okay, there's a Strip Mine. He's gonna drop to 13. I wonder if he's gonna use the Strip. Tapping six, look at that. Oh, there's a Triskelion. So Triskelion finding its way on the board. We didn't see that at all. And there's, of course, the strip of the Underground Sea. That's a good move. This is difficult for Masa here. It's going to drop to 16. He's under some pressure. And I mean, you want to attack because that's what you do with the Surrendip. But if you do, you're going to take maybe six damage. Oh, there is a Swords to Plowshares, though. But now, of course, uh, Kun Kun can choose to deal three points of damage to Masa or take the life. He's a little bit in the tank here wonder what he's gonna do we kind of have to follow the gestures of the players because they don't speak Japanese unfortunately so he could put Masa on 13 because he's currently on 16 yeah he is dealing three points of damage so Masa is gonna go to 13 and he's gonna gain a life gonna go up to 14 then he's gonna take three and he's gonna go down to 11 again so if I'm correct uh, Kun Kun's on 11 at the moment Masa on 13 Kun Kun taking his turn the Ang still on the battlefield they're tapping two okay he's gonna attack for two so Masa dropping to 11 there's a black vice not sure how many cards are in hand here of Masa he's gonna take a damage for sure from the surrender gonna go to 10 I mean, one, two, how many cards does he have there? It seems to be more than four. Hard for me to tell, though. He's going to tap two, so perhaps he's going to do something instant speed. Okay, there's a mind twist, so twisting away the last cards. Unfortunately, we cannot see them. It's out of the screen, but Kun Kun's hands empty, I believe. There's an attack for three, so Kun Kun dropping to eight. I believe Masa is on ten, but I could be wrong. Maybe he took damage from the vice. He's gonna tap or attack for two, so Masa dropping to eight, taking a damage from the surrender, dropping to seven. There's the attack for three, so Kun Kun going to five. Ooh, this is an intense game. Kun Kun taking the turn, attacking here, putting Masa on. No, there's a disenchant, so Masa is gonna stay on seven. This disenchant is so important. There's another vice. Taking a damage from the surrender, gonna go to six. Like, I don't know how many cards are in hand. That's a little bit frustrating. Two life here for Kun Kun. And then, oh, then there's a Sionic Blast. That's it, that is it. He's on minus two, that is it. So again, I'm not sure how many cards were in Masa's hand. So perhaps he was on a lower life total. It doesn't matter because of that Sionic Blast. Oh man, he's, he's winning the game here against Kun Kun. 
2-0. Congratulations, Masa. Unfortunately, we don't have a game number three. I mean, these guys, you know, they're tough. They just play a best of three, and man, you've got two games, you win it. And I believe this was also uh, the winning game here of the tournament. So, Masa, congratulations for winning your old school Tokyo meetup. Uh, this month congratulations for that with your beautiful very strong skies deck so it's white blue and black here we see it in the background and like i said it reminds me a lot of the deck but then with with more creatures and i'm really intrigued by the sangir vampires in the deck i think it's a beautiful creature uh, and yeah please let me know masa what made you decide to play sangir vampire instead uh, of for example the four star angels i'm sure you have your reasons um anyway thank you very much for watching another episode right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you want to know more about old school magic in tokyo please check out the description below there's a link to their uh, twitter or their x page as it's called uh, nowadays so you can click there and you can find out more about the tokyo old school scene uh, there's some cool guys you know they're nice and eternal central definitely has its charm okay this was the episode for today before you go please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and also if you're not a subscriber yet please click that subscribe button and ring that bell Thank you. Now that that's out of the way, we are getting ready for the most important part of the video because we're going to watch uh, at the end scroll. We're going to look at the end scroll and in the end scroll, we see all the fantastic, wunderbar, beautiful, amazing patrons of the channel. If you also would like to become a patron, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Now let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.